This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014, an interview with Maria Alicia Chang from Music Metric. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. So hey Alicia, how's it going? It's going really well, thank you. Excellent. We've all lost our voices a little bit here at Medium. It's, it's been a uh, long four days. Uh, but, uh, you know, I wanted to catch up with you because, uh, of course, I, I spoke with Andrew from Music Metric uh, last January. And so it's been a year since our last catch up. And, uh, you know, you guys are doing some really interesting stuff uh, in the music data space. So what were your milestones for uh, 2013 and what was, you know, the highlights of the year for you? Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much for having us on the show. Medium's been, as always, a really busy time for us. Um, and so perfect timing for me to lose my voice. I think everyone's been talking about the fact that uh, they've hardly been able to hear anything I say, um, uh, which is maybe a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> but the, uh, the company as a whole has grown from strength to strength. We've really increased our kind of sales and marketing team this year. And we've just launched a whole app refresh. So there's a load of new functionality that's just come into the app. Um, one of the things we now have is Twitter mentions for all artists and great Twitter location data so you know even better location data than we already have um, which is very fine grain because of the peer-to-peer -peer and other sort of social um, data that we have but but now we've really got that extra edge, um, you know, to our global tracking. And our insights feature is the big, big, big feature that everyone's been talking about. Um, I think Greg, our CEO, was on a panel um, and it was one of the main discussion points really was how to drive um, the kind of usage of big data in the music industry because I think everybody is looking at data to help them to solve different problems. Yeah. Um, and our insights feature is coming back to basics really so it's it's like having a team of expert phd statisticians kind of looking at the data for you and just giving you really simple um contextual sound bites for you to take away and digest every day so it'll tell you things like you know whether or not your artist has dropped in rank and which kind of artist it's overtaken um, also it'll tell you things like how in general the chart performances so is this an, an all-time high for the artist on plays or views or even for a particular track and it'll also be able to say you know which things are being shared or or kind of talked about the most um, at this time yeah. we've got a, a whole host of big deals and partnerships to announce just um, you know first week of March I think in the run up to South by Southwest which obviously is a really good focus point for me Medem is is very much about getting um, a business viewpoint for the rest of the year yeah. and certainly where we're going is um, you know really taking the taking the torch and, and leading the charge for people to get the most easily digestible insights and sound bites and reporting from data yeah. so again it's not just about you know this source that source putting it together in a really actionable and digestible way yeah of course we've been talking for you know a couple of years about uh, getting the context behind the stats uh, and that's uh, you know really important it's not easy to do you know something like for example understanding whether uh, a track got played by a big radio station in uh, Argentina and you had a spike in traffic there yeah. try to link that play from the radio station into the feed and understand that that happened and that drove the, the engagement is very difficult yeah. the, you know uh, are you working towards that and uh, you know it's going to take a, a little while longer yeah. before we can we can get there right absolutely <laughs> well we're working with a lot of big um, partners who have that kind of contextual um, data so already we work with Songkick that give us a lot of contextual data about live we're also now working with you know another partner bands in town who've given us access to not only their really comprehensive global um, listings but also some of the geographic data behind that we're also working with um, other big metadata partners that partner other things in the industry like um, you know iTunes match for instance and we're we're starting to do a lot of more data science. So we've done a lot of, you know, when we're looking back over the last 12 months, as you were saying, we've done a lot of work with partners like Spotify, also SoundCloud, also Last FM, to look at exactly where we can see these platforms having an impact. Um, you know, so around it could be like, um, you know, video plays or, you know, any of these things, you know, for, for an artist. They want to understand what has the most uh, impact and Spotify particularly wanted to say what really drives their streaming numbers and we did a little case study with Tom O'Dell and we looked at the time period around his album release and it was in the summer uh, last year and then we realized actually that his 
biggest peaks were driven, uh, you know, on streaming on Spotify, were driven by his uh, live performances yeah. um, at two festivals. So I think live is still a huge thing. Um, you know, when we looked at the Grammys, we just looked at the Grammys and we saw that on average, if you performed at the Grammys, you got 9,000 fans um, from performing, extra fans after that day. Um, and if you won an award, you actually got 12,000 fans. And if you did both things, if you won a Grammy and you performed at the Grammys, you got a whopping 40,000 extra fans. So in terms of how live events bring, um, you know, engagement into that kind of second screen space where people you know want to go online immediately and find out more about an artist and you know show that they're a fan and 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 look at the you know content that's that's there um you know that's we've seen that that's been a huge thing yeah also looking back we've seen you know when we do our kind of like overview analysis which you know we do a lot for for different brands um yeah. and we've been working a lot more in that space actually recently and also kind of streaming radio playlists want to understand how the platforms you know uh people engage on the platforms yeah. and with F facebook when we looked at the last year we saw that actually the top range the top sort of 100 artists haven't been getting as much of, of a percentage of the new fans so i think in 2012 it was like they, they had something like 36 percent of all new fan ads were in the top 100 artists right so that's a huge percentage it's over a third right and then this year uh well 2013 when we looked back um we saw that actually only 24 percent were in that uh top 100 artists you know so in other words 24 percent of new fans yeah. and that's really exciting because what that means is that the mid-range artists you know the artists should have like between say you know in the charts like 1,500 to say three or 5,000, they're starting to see a lot more growth. And that's actually showing that these um, discovery and recommendation things that people are focusing on through streaming services and you know on demand and all kinds of ways in which new artists are coming up are actually helping to, to allow that you know, artists further down in the charts to actually gain more fans and get more, more popularity. Yeah. And certainly when you look at someone like Lord, that really proves that, you know, she was an artist that kind of came from nowhere and grew fans so, so quickly that she became a billboard number one. Yeah. So, you know, it's really, it's really, really great time. And uh, you're talking about brands and I was um, uh, speaking with uh, Ronnie at Vision Artists, I believe, yeah. and uh, she uses the music metric actually to uh, show brands the impact of artists and, and their reach and uh, who their audience is. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a way essentially to validate uh, the metrics of the artists to show exactly brands right. that that so do you get a lot of that we do actually and what was really funny is there's a there's a guy a couple of guys who work on the uh, 300 project with leo yeah. um who were doing kind of a and r and they came over to our booth to look at the um new new features and then they started to do exactly that they wanted to check out the bands that you know they have in their mind it's like oh i'm really i feel like this is a really hot band and you know i've seen them live and i think they're great now i want to check out how they're doing online and they were really impressed because they were like wow you know my band's at like 1200 maybe um which is you know out of 750,800 artists that's that's incredible right. <laughs> so you know for you would never you wouldn't necessarily look at the data and say oh they've got loads of fans i'm going to sign them because when you work with an artist, you have to be really passionate about them. So, yeah. you know, you wouldn't do it just on that one factor. But if you've been out and you've seen a band that's really captured you and, and you've thought, wow, you know, I love this band. I want to see how they're doing online. It just gives you that extra kind of reassurance if you see that, hey, you know, these guys are completely unknown. Uh, they don't have any management. They don't have a label. And yet on their own, they've, they've, they've really developed a fan base already and they're, they're they, you know they're already moving the dial and that gives you that reassurance to say yeah you know maybe this is something I should be taking very seriously and an artist who if I invested in you know was gonna was gonna be successful yeah sure I mean I have heard a little bit of uh, uh, sort of uh, stress from managers that are trying to uh, work with labels uh, uh, who are, have uh, data scientists actually a lot of uh, labels now have A&R data guys that look yeah. at, uh, at, at that side of things and uh, a bit of frustration around uh, uh, some people still not really understanding the numbers uh, yeah. so for example they have a small uh, you know a small independent artist that might have grown you know a thousand percent but the numbers are still small yeah. 
and the label still looks yeah, at the exactly. at the at the dry numbers exactly. without looking at the growth. Exactly. And you know, that is why, you know, for us we don't have one chart. We have a three-dimensional view, which will be your, your total, you know, with could it be fans or plays or page views um, or illegal downloads, any of those things. You have your totals, you have how much you've changed in the last day. So, you know, who's popped up like a kind of rolling weekly window. And then you have acceleration. And right. acceleration is, you know, who had the biggest jump, you know, from yesterday to today. And that, when you're looking at A&R, is what you should be thinking about because something that's growing very rapidly is what... Um, is what really gives a signal to something that is likely to become successful. But, you know, there's no there's no one way in which artists become successful, right? I mean, there are artists who might not grow for a long period of time and then suddenly grow very quickly. So you can't, you know, you shouldn't feel that um, not having those signals means to completely disregard it. Yeah. But if you do see those signals, that starts to give you, um, you know, something exciting to play with. Yeah. And acceleration, yeah, exactly, it's a story. Um, and we are very much helping to empower, you know, we want to empower artists, we want to empower independent labels, we want to empower people to have the right tools behind them to say, you know, I'm working hard and I need to show people that this is something that we should continue to invest in. Because you're absolutely right. Managers want want to be able to say, please keep investing in my artists. I know that the numbers aren't big, but look, things are heading in the right direction and the growth, you know, the acceleration is 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 good and, and, and we want people to focus on that. But it is about education. Yeah. Sure. And uh, finally, you know, looking at the ne you know next uh, 12 months, uh, what would you like to be a year from now? <laughs> Where would I like to be? Um, on a yacht <laughs> in the sun. Um, where would I love us? Well, 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 <laughs> maybe maybe if Beats launches in the, in the, in Cannes next year. <laughs> exactly. Where, me, Dem, please, can you launch in the summertime? That's what I. No. Um, yeah, that that dream that dream is never going to happen. But um, where would I love Music Metric to be? Well, I want Music Metric to be working with more brands. Yeah. I want Music Metric to be working with more independent artists and labels uh, and most of all I want Music Metric to have really delivered on what we promise which is to make the data really easy to understand and even easier to act on so we're bringing together partners and people who you know we don't necessarily do all the tools and services that artists need to be able to execute on things but we're trying to pull together the right partners so that you can have a bit more of an end 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 to end solution and we can start to say to you well look you know here are things that you can specifically do in order to to help yourself and we work with um a lot of great companies like Eagle Rock um, and Will there, who's, you know, kind of like their digital brain. You know, he yeah. gave me, you know, we worked together and did some case studies and he had some fantastic use cases of how he was, you know, tracking links that he had on YouTube and old catalogs. So seeing which for the bands, which of the, um, you know, older songs were getting a lot of traffic so that they could go to those and put links to the new stuff, right, to drive, you know, and, 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 and again, putting those links back from yeah. the new stuff to the old stuff. So it's, you know, being really smart about how you use digital and data. You know, data sounds like a scary word, but it really is the simple things, the nuts and bolts that people have always been looking at, you know, in your marketing yeah. and your PR uh, strategies, you know, to drive your sales. It's just much more detailed. And so in that sense, it, it becomes overwhelming. So. Yeah. And I, and I want us to get there. And I think we have a lot of goodwill within the industry. You know, I came here and so many people said to me, this tool has, you know, really, really helped blown us away you know for my artist we work with a lot of small independent artists who log in all the time and we have actually well, one other really cool feature is this live chat support so you know if you're an artist and you don't have a big team you can kind of just live chat you, you're looking at something you're not quite sure what it says or what to do and a lot of us say to us this has really helped you know uh, this has helped me you know get a manager yeah. or it's it's helped me to seem like um, you know, to prove just how hard I want to work as an artist, yeah. you know, and, and, and get that recognition. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, Marilisha, it's uh, always a pleasure. And it's musicmetric.com for everybody watching from home. Yes. Thank you so much for having me.